Yours truly, Princess Tia from Kingston, Jamaica, in the Caribbean, and you're watching Third Eye Vision Show with Anthony Parker. Welcome to Third Eye Visions, where we motivate the blind, stimulate your mind, and welcome all kinds. And if you are new to the channel, <clears throat> you know what to do. But just in case you don't, make sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you can get uploads or be the first ones to get them. And let's interact also. Like or dislike. Share the video so everybody can get a piece of the action. And also comment. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, if you enjoyed the video and things of that nature. Americans face a coronavirus mask and hand sanitizer dilemma. I want to thank my frat brother, hey five, for sending the video and also being on the front line to aid during this crisis. So with that being said, let's check out what he has to say about what is really going on in America as they are trying desperately to provide these needed items. Let's go. That's right, we're on live. We're gonna get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? Today I'm going to talk to you about um, why I do these so late, talk to you about hand sanitizing, talk to you about price increases and these price wars, uh, and then I'm going to um, talk to you a little bit about what I did today on this fight against uh, COVID-19 and trying to support um, patients and our first front liners, first, yeah, front liners uh, and then what I have planned for tomorrow. So the reason why I do this so late is because this is such an urgent situation that my phone is constantly blowing up all day. There's no way I could do a three minute or five minute type live without my phone going off. So uh, there's such an urgent need for masks still. Um, the three ply surgical masks, the KN95s and the N95s. Um, and then um, let me tell you a little bit about the, the surgical masks. Um, let me grab one. It's the lower level surgical mask that you see doctors with in offices. It's got a piece of metal strip that goes up top that kind of curves around your nose. Then you have a lower amount to, you can breathe in these a little better. They're a little looser. Uh, they're pretty decent to have. It's better than nothing. They're better than scarves. They're better than homemade uh, devices because it's a triple layer and it has certain filtration systems. I want to post on Facebook um, the different levels of filtration of various ma masks so that that mask is pretty decent mask to wear around um, and um, kind of got off track on that talking about that um, and then we have another mask which is the KN95s um, it has a heavier filtration than the surgical mask fits a little tighter fits a little snug like this uh, if you're doing trying to do some workouts or any heavy lifting whatever it's almost difficult to breathe through it's just for you to be relaxed but it has a heavier filtration system system filters out way more viruses than the uh, three ply surgical mask and then you have another le level mask called the N95 which is a little thicker than this and might have a little rest respirator there now from my understanding those are reserved for um, extreme healthcare professionals that's definitely around COVID patients. Uh, myself as a supplier um, right now is not authorized to sell those. The federal government uh, says that any and every supplier that has that, that N95 uh, cannot, you have to give them to the government, sell them to the government. Um, so I don't have any access to N95s. I always refer to KN95s, which are these masks, okay? And these are very difficult to get nowadays because they're nine times out of ten uh, manufactured out of China. I got these out of Korea. 
but I just purchased uh, 10,000 of these uh, that landed in Los Angeles and should be, I should have half of those coming to my Clinton, Mississippi warehouse, the other half going to my New Orleans warehouse. We're gonna get those disseminated. So um, my fight in this is trying to be kind of a, uh, a ninja in this war, this trade war and getting masks in because we've not been able to get the mask in from China. Things going on in China where um, it's been rumored from people that I know well that trade there for the last 10 years where they confiscate the PPE that's supposed to go to the U.S. So U.S. businesses purchase the PPEs from manufacturers they have a good relationship with. The manufacturers manufacture it, ship it out. When it gets to customs, then the Chinese supposedly, from what I hear, um, government grabs it and sells it to another country. And the U.S. business or the U.S. government that purchased it just lost their money and their product. So that's some of the things that's going on. And that all leads to increases in prices because now the people that buy, that, that typically buy them, don't have the product. They spent their money and the supply dwindles. Um, another pricing issue now that just took place yesterday is shipping. So everybody now and their mama is shipping more stuff because everybody's on lockdown. Everybody stays at home. You might go out to the grocery store, but anything else you're trying to buy, you ship it from Amazon. And that's why Amazon hired more people because um, you know everybody's staying at home and they're ordering things now. So that's going to have a big effect on our economy long term. Uh, the way the way that people now are shifting to buying so people are at home being accustomed to being home for a month or two at a time buying everything online more things are shipped and therefore the prices go up not only the prices going up because more things are being shipped it's also because um, you know a lot of people are getting sick so the FedEx drivers the UPS drivers the DHL drivers they're getting, they're getting sick just like everybody else or they're fearful of getting sick and they're like, I don't want to harm my family so I'm not going to a job where I stop at make you know, 50, 60 stops a day uh, and subject myself to being sick. So those prices have gone up. Um, DHL, FedEx, um, well, FedEx and um, UPS for sure just went up 2%. So my cost on these masks just went up. Um, with all of my suppliers, both foreign and domestic. Um, and then a good friend, frat brother of mine, Johnny Raleigh, explained to me he went, it's something that he sh sends off on a weekly basis that typically costs him a $1.80 at U.S. Postal Service. And today he went to ship the same thing off that he ships off every week, same weight. And it was, I think he said, $3.20. And they explained to him there was a price hike on yesterday. So it affects U.S. Postal Service because everybody is shipping more. Guess what? I'm shipping out hundreds of masks a week a week ago I was shipping out zero masks a week because I wasn't in for this fight for uh, against coronavirus so um, so there might be a thousand more of me that wasn't doing this before uh, and everybody's at home ordering masks which everybody wasn't doing that two weeks ago so that leads to price increases overall for cost of the high demand product high demand products right now are masks and hand sanitizer so um, talk to you a little bit about hand sanitizer you might have saw my video yesterday I went when I was in Dallas I bought some hand sanitizer and this is the most expensive hand sanitizer I've ever seen um, once again supply and demand um, I have customers of mine former manufacturing buddies of mine who all have been calling me looking for two things um, isopropyl alcohol and they are looking for um, hydroxymethylcellulose, which is the thickener that goes into hand sanitizer that makes it gel up. Well, you're gonna start seeing a lot of hand sanitizer out, out there that do not have or does not have the hydroxymethylcellulose because most of these things were sourced in China and shipped here. So once again, that's another thing that they can hold up at the border to create a crisis over here for us. So. Um, I'm learning these things day by day as I talk to my manufacturers and people in the industry. So everybody's like, hey, send me some hand sanitizer with my shipment. So I probably have over 100, 220, I think, shipments of, uh, hand, of uh, KN95 masks. I go out, friends, family, and associates of friends from my post. 
Uh, I was gonna try to ship out these bottles of hand sanitizer, create a price, ship them out, um, and add it to your order, but I can't because it is, when you go to the post office, you hear them say, do you have anything liquid, perishable, flammable, blah, 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 blah. Well, this is liquid and this is flammable. So I'd have to package it and send it a certain way that I cannot send the way I send the, the mask. So um, since there's a high demand for this and everybody's asking for it, I'm, I am going to sell this. This stuff costs too much. From I got this from a wholesaler, a wholesale price. These little hand, hand sanitizer bottles typically would go for like a buck, buck and a half. Now they're going for like five to seven bucks in a retail place. So since I bought them at wholesale, I let them go at three fifty, three dollars and fifty cents each for it, for anybody who wants them. But I I, I got to send them in the whole case, so it's twenty four that comes in the case, which comes out to be like comes out to be like eighty four bucks for a whole box of hand sanitizer. Um, but this, the thing about this hand sanitizer, going back to the story, is let me open it up. Um, I read the ingredients, and it says it is. 70% isopropyl alcohol, which is, you know, the top ingredient hand sanitizer. And this is basically all liquid, basically like alcohol, alcohol, okay? But you can't even get that. So this is basically a small bottle. Sm smells strong, like it'll get you drunk. Like a heavy bottle of alcohol. So, an alcohol, like I said, you go to the store and see if you can find it. And you can't. So now they got it in these small bottles. Um, and it, uh, yeah, like little two ounce bottles. And this, this stuff, this is the reason why it's priced high. And that, and they also, it doesn't have a gel-like feel because the hydroxymethylcellulose has been basically hijacked. Um, there's, there's no supply coming into the U.S. for hydroxymethylcellulose. So I had pharmacists calling me, pharmacist buddies calling me, asking me, can they get some? So I'm working on some methods on resolving this um, with some manufacturing partners of mine in the U.S., particularly in Texas. And hopefully we have this resolved. So, um, so uh, speaking of, um, a buyer for the federal government contacted me on yesterday, no Sunday, and asked for three million masks. And I was like, I can't get you three million masks right now. They're like, okay, just give me a million masks. And I was like, I wish it were so. Um, but the masks aren't available, uh, and definitely not available for purchase by the federal government from China right now. So they have to use individuals like me that have relationships with other individuals that can then find a way to maneuver around the system. So you have to be clever, um, have to be an open thinker, op uh, you know, think, open-minded thinker, uh, and the type of person that just figures out how to get it done. So voila, um, those of you that know me know that I'm that guy. So, but there's a lot of guys like me, and we all tend to know one another. So now we're an asset to our country uh, and to our citizens so not too long horn but that's kind of how it works right now you got to use kind of uh, new tactics to, to try to help um, try to help you know our citizens uh, combat this virus <laughs> Bye.